All right, so in all of our previous examples, we sort of just like looked at pixels in place as part of this grid. Maybe we're grabbing from its neighbors, but we're doing really simple, just sort of like math to pixels on their own. Uh, but there's some pretty cool, freaky, weird stuff that we can do too, like making this image um, is really fun. These examples are from um, sort of modified from this book, An Interdisciplinary Introduction to Image Processing by Stephen Panamoto. And um, it's really cool. It's from MIT Press. It's very mathy. Um, and, you know, I mean, I even have a note here. To be honest, I don't know exactly how these are working. And I think that's okay. As an artist or a designer or a creative person working with code, you don't always have to know exactly what's going on, but you do want to have a sense that you have control um, or can explore the code. So, you know, his program is written in a different language and I've sort of um, expanded it and made it more interactive here within P5.js. So um, there's kind of a lot of steps and a lot of it's boilerplate, just like for loops and stuff. So let's look at the code and see how it works. And then um, we can talk more about it. So I've loaded this image um, in here. I'm um, changing it and set up. There's actually two different functions we'll look at here. Um, and the first one is called distort. And that's what you're seeing here on screen. And there's some arguments that we can add to this that we'll talk about in a sec. Um, so I'm creating this blank output image in the function. I'm loading the pixels for both that and the input, walking through all the pixels. Um, and then the real work happens on these two lines here. This is the math that happens. And basically we're creating um, for every X and Y position, we're then creating um, a new X and Y position that we wanna grab the value of the pixel from and put it there. So in some places it's gonna put itself back in the location. Other times it's gonna grab it from further away or closer away. And that's how we get these kind of like crazy distorted, almost like looking through a funhouse mirror or something like that. Um, and these formulas are pulled from, um, from this book. Um, and I, I've retitled some of these variables. So waviness and period, I think are decent descriptions of what these do. Um, but this is where my math leaves me. So if you understand better, you know, it's hard. I can't really separate the two from each other, though they definitely influence each other. So if you understand it better, please let me know. I'd be really interested to understand this better. Um, so let's try changing. Oh, and then we just grab the pixel and put it back in that current X and Y position. So we can try changing these variables here and see the result. Um, I have found for waviness, the smaller number means fewer repetitions. So if instead of 15, I do five, we get these kind of broad ones. If we do 50, we'll get lots of repetition and, and almost this like doubling, tripling kind of thing, which is pretty sweet. And then the period I found a smaller number equals more repetitions and you get this kind of wavy looking thing, which is pretty sweet. Um, and I've made it so that you can control them independently. Um, so right now they're both the same, but if we made these X and Y different, you'll see it's repeating with one kind of pattern in one direction and one a different one with the other. Try really reducing this. Um, again, for me, I'm not super clear what these variables exactly do, but it's from, I've spent lots of time experimenting with this. It seems they do different things, um, but they're kind of like mushed together. One cool thing you could try doing is um, creating a for loop that would generate a whole bunch of examples of these, save them with a file name that notes those variables, and then maybe you could kind of unpack or discover more about how this is working. Um, so that's the distort, which I think is really fun. Um, and then I've also, and this is from the same chapter in this book, um, created a fisheye sort of effect, it's like distortion. Um, and this one takes in, again, an image and spits back an image and then a center point for the fisheye effect. So we can move this around and get a different result. Um, so let's see how this one is working. Similar idea. Um, we're gonna come back to the distance stuff here in a second. We create an output image, load the pixels, go through all the pixels, and then we do some math over here. And oops, let me just make that a little bigger. Do some math, there's a bunch of stuff here. Um, but again, we create this temporary X and Y position and we move the, the or we put the color from that position into our current position and send back an image. Uh, so again, this, uh, well, actually we'll talk about this function in a second. 
Um, so for each pixel, we're instead of thinking about this Cartesian coordinate system of X and Y, up and down, orthogonal total grid, here we're going to use polar coordinates. And we'll talk a lot more about these when we do simulation because they're a really powerful idea. But you can think of instead of coordinate being X and Y, they're relative to a center position. And then the coordinate is a certain distance and a certain angle. And we can use that to define any point. Um, so like the middle would be 0, 0, 0 distance, 0 angle. Maybe this would be 100 and 0 angle. And this might be 100 and um, a 45 degree angle something like that. Um, so to calculate these, we can use the distance function from our center point to our current point. And then we use ATN2, which is a really helpful trig function to compute the distance. Um, yeah, we're really running out of room here. You can see this is why I don't use the editor much after a certain point, because it's just not that. Oh, there's not enough room. Um, we will also see, like in, for example, in the book, um, the distance is called rho, the Greek character, and theta for angle. I'm calling them distance and angle because I think it's easier to understand. Um, OK, so these do that computation. And then to do the distortion, we can change either the distance or the angle or both. So for a fisheye, we just set distance equal to distance times distance divided by the maximum distance that we might see. Now, how do we figure out that? Well. I've gone ahead, I mean, I think there's a lot of ways you could do this. Um, inside the function here, I've computed the distance from the center point to each corner. Um, so I've got, and I made this into a list um, from the center to the upper left, to the upper right, to the bottom right, and to the lower left. And then we can use the max function, which either can you can put in two numbers or you can put in a list and it'll give you the biggest value that results. So in this case, my distance is just whichever of these directions is the biggest, which I know is the maximum distance from that point. Um, so I divide by that and I get this fisheye look. But we can modify or we can use different formulas here and get different results. So instead, we can get this cool ripple effect by um, using this formula here, which also uses sine. And we get this really cool ripple. Now that's coming from the corner. You could move this around. You could have it be, it's going to be very slow based on mouse coordinates, but you could do that. Um, and then one of my favorites is this twist one where we don't change the distance, but we do change the angle. And you get this really <laughs> crazy looking thing. Um, let's put this back in the center because this is pretty fun. Um, I could do width divided by two, height divided by two. And you get this like distorted, crazy, you know, like looking through a circular mirror or a tubular mirror or something like that. And these are all based on just changing um, either the distance or um, the angle. And now we could try both. I'm not sure, probably not gonna get something. I mean, that's kind of cool. Um, that's getting pretty far from the source image. And that might be something you wanna think about too is, you know, how, how totally glitched out and disappeared or disintegrated you want this to be versus um, kind of like recognizable. And of course, the image you feed in is also going to change that. Um, but that's this distortion. Again, I'm sorry, I can't tell you exactly kind of, oh, we didn't talk about this. This is important. So how do we go back from polar coordinates being angle and distance to being x and y? Um, you use this formula. So this is the center position plus for x cosine of the angle times the distance. And for why it's the sine of the angle. This again is used a lot in games and simulation where you know if you have like a cannon and you want to have something shoot out of it, you need to be able to know the x and y point based on the angle and distance. Um, so that just reconverts it back into polar or to Cartesian world, grid world, so that we can get the pixel and put it in place. Um, yeah, so play with this. You can easily make your own formulas and just experiment and see what happens here. Um, you're going to get a lot of stuff that's a dead end, but there's some really cool things you can do once you start playing and distorting with images. And this wouldn't need to be only with photographs. You could generate a sketch using you know, text and then apply these things too, and you would get some really, really cool results.